Right, so this is session two of the programming guide from Pseudocode to Python. So a real basic thing that you need to know in programming is how to get the user to enter data in via the keyboard. So just to clarify that we've got Pseudocode and Python, in this instance, they're very similar. Um, they both use the command called input, and that's the easiest way to allow the person to enter data. So there are three parts to the input command. You've got the variable, the actual input command itself, and then the message you want displayed. So here, you've got name, which is the variable, which is where the response is going to be stored. Because when they type something in, it needs to be stored somewhere. When we store things in programming languages, using a variable. So we've got the variable name that we're storing what they type in into. We've got the input command with the brackets. And then we've got the message on the inside that you want to display, please enter your name. And then here I'm just printing out the name afterwards, as you can see. Okay. So there are three parts to it, let's go over that again. So look, you've got the variable it's going to be stored at, you've got the input command, and you've got the message. It is very common, very common, that students, when I teach this, do not put a variable to store the result in. And if you don't, what will happen is, it'll run, you can type something in, but whatever you typed in will just be stored nowhere and the program will carry on. This can be good for a, you know, press enter to continue kind of thing, where you want them just to press enter and you don't care, so you just put input, press enter to continue, and they hit enter and then the program carries on, because you don't want them to store what they've typed in, but nearly always you want to store what they've typed in, otherwise you wouldn't be using this method. So three parts, variable, input, bracket, okay? Where these quotes are, and there's a message, you could put um, a variable that you've made yourself. So let's say you had, um, please enter your name stored in the variable input message. Then you can use variables there, but re very rarely will that be important. So just for this and for everything, just remember it like this, okay? So this is the same in pseudocode as it is in Python, exactly the same. Um, it is possible to not have a message at all and just have two brackets, um, but don't do that in the exam as you'll probably lose marks because it will probably say something like, you know, it will probably say you with a message and then you, you will lose marks and why risk it? If you ask them to enter their name, put please enter your name. I like to put these uh, uh, colons um, at the end just to say like here's where your name's going to be. Um, I don't put a space, it looks like I have there but I haven't. Um, just because then it's hard to tell whether they've put a space in and I feel like they, they, they think they have put a space in, they try and delete it. So I just use a colon, but it doesn't really matter as long as the message is clear. So that is keyboard input. That is literally, by the way, we've covered that. That is all you do. Okay, keyboard input is like that. Please enter your name, you know. So that's one thing we're looking at in this session and that's it. So on the sheet, you'll have some things with uh, inputs in, you know, you can do them. But you could do them now or you can wait till after the casting. So... Last session, we talked about data types. So you've got integer, float, string, and Boolean. Now, it is possible to move from one data type to another. So if we want an integer to now be a float, and this is really important if you were to suddenly try and do, if you try and divide two integers together, like say five and two, you will not get 2.5. Because you have um, two integers, you will get two. It will round it down to two. Um, and because sometimes you don't want this, what you would do is turn them both into floats or real numbers and then do the division and you'll get 2.5 as an answer. There are many reasons you might do it. Here's another common usage to turn a number into a string so that we can add a pound sign at the front. Um, it is possible to not turn it into a string to do that, but very often I find there's a space, it puts a space in. So if I turn 4.99 into a string, I can literally add a pound sign. I do pound sign plus, you know, the string of 4.99. Um, yeah, as I just said, to turn an integer into a float to make the math use decimals. Um, sometimes you want to put like, the score in the middle of a message and it's easier that way. Um, and there are lots of reasons. Um, sometimes there are some... Uh, programs that you're saving data to that need it to be in text because like Excel for example if you're trying to import things into Excel it likes it in text um, rather than numbers very strangely um, it's easier to do in text so you would turn everything into a string and then save it and then bring it into Excel so here is an example of how you cast a variable so that is change it from 
uh, one thing to another. So as you can see here with age equals 18, this is a string. We know it's a string, words, because it's got quotes around it. So if I do print age times two, I get 18, 18, because it's a string. Whereas if I put int, integer, bracket, age, bracket, now that is going to attempt to get as much of an integer out of that as it can. I think if there's decimal points, it will just take the 18. Um, and then multiply by two, so now we've got 36. Okay, so it's extracted, that has changed that. I, age is still a string, we're not changing age, it's just for this one little tiny second here, um, we are. If we wanted to permanently change age to an integer, we'd do age equals int age with the brackets. We'd do like here would be age, instead of that, you know, age equals int age. Or we could do int around the quotes here, but obviously we're setting it to 18, so why would we not just take the quotes out? But, you know, in some programs you might want to permanently change it. It's very rare, I normally leave it as it is, and you know, just use a second variable, but I don't know. It depends on your style. So here's another example of when we're doing it to turn a um, integer into a string. They use the term str for this one. So that you've got text equals well done, you've got a score of str, and then we're printing it out. So it's, it's turning that, because if we try to add a number to, to a string, it wouldn't work. So we have to add a string to a string, um, so we convert a number to a string, and then we're printing it out. But of course, once again, score here has not been actually changed to a string permanently, because score is still 4005 integer. It's just for this tiny little section here that we're adding, we're adding the string version, just for this section. Now, earlier, I showed you this one, and you might have said to yourself, well, can't I just do print text comma score? Because, you know, that will work. And it does. It does work. Look, I could have done that. The only thing with comma is when you do that. So, so here what I've done is, in case you're confused, I'm printing a string out, doing a comma. Because in comma, you can put comma between variables, and then it will print out like, you know, I don't have to turn that into a string because I'm just going to put a comma, do the other variable, and then I can do a comma and another message. The only thing with that is it the comma adds a space. So you see I've deleted the space here now. Adds a space. Now that's fine um, in print, because I might want the space. Uh, and print allows um, me to put commas and put different variables of different types in, and it will print numbers as text, and it will print them. <coughs> Excuse me. But that is a thing to print command. We might have a command. We might be saving that to a file. And I want to save that as one thing to a file, and then that won't work. So whilst it does work here, this using a comma method, rather than adding the string version to it to get the same result, you might think that might just be easier, just don't put a space here and put a comma. Um, that might not work on the next thing you use it for that isn't print. Say you're trying to save it to a file, maybe you wanna, I don't know, send it into some function you've made to do something else, who knows. <coughs> Excuse me. So, anyway, that's what casting is. It allows you to convert from one data type to another, if you can. If you can't, it'll just give you an error, or it just will give you nothing. So if you try to convert um, a B into an integer, it'll just give you nothing. So where is Python? Python is a little different here. So this is one of the things we've got to talk about. This is the first instance where Python is not the same as pseudocode. So your exam will be in pseudocode. And, but you can write in Python or pseudocode. Now you're in a bit of luck, because if you write in Python and make a mistake, but it still works as pseudocode, they'll, they're fine, they'll let you off. But just in case we do any pseudocode, uh, sorry, any Python coding, I'm gonna explain the difference. So take here, <coughs> in pseudocode, this would work fine. This would literally work fine. So if I type 21, it would print 42 in pseudocode. But in Python, it won't. It'll print 2121. And that's because Python's a bit different. Not all languages do this. Some do, some don't. Um, Python will always return a string from a keyboard input, even if you type a number. So even though we've typed 21, which is an integer, it had this age is a string. So in the memory, it's quote, 21, quote. I don't 100% know why that is, but there we go. Um, a lot of other languages, well, I think in other languages, uh, just if you want to know the real difference, 
When you make a variable in other languages, you have to say what it is. So you'd have to say int here, or string, or float. So you can't just put the word age and write input. You have to actually say what data type it is. And so I suppose then the input command knows what it's going to because you've defined age as an integer. So it's going to send an integer to age. Um, as for having as age is not, you know, we don't say what data type it is. Obviously, we know it's an integer because it's age. Um, but anyway, in Python, it comes in as a string. So you would have to cast it as an integer. Um, so sorry, pseudocode will print it as that. I explained that, but there you go. So Python will print it as that. The pseudocode, so the exam version will print it as that. So if you're in the exam and you forget to do the next bit, don't worry, don't bother doing the next bit in the exam. I'm just showing you in case we do any Python programming, you know. So basically in Python, you would need to do this. You would need to put the int before uh, around the input. And if you think about what happens here, the input will return a string okay here left that will go into this bracket that will be turned into an integer and then stored in age so that would just do what the other one did without needing it but you have to put the cast around it you don't need these spaces but i always put them because i know how many brackets i've got so i put the input in the middle and then i put in bracket space and then space at the end just so i can clearly see that this is the bit that's got the um uh the input and then this is the brace okay so just quickly, it is also possible if you wanted to, although I don't like uh, doing it this way, to get it like this and then go age equals the int of age. That's what I was saying earlier, if you wanted to permanently change it. You could do it that way, but the reason I don't show it is you'll, you'll never see it online. People will always instantly put in around this um, and do that. And there you go. I don't, personally, I don't know why they didn't make some for like int underscore input and then float underscore input, and then just have input for string. I really don't understand why they didn't just make that and then have one return each one, um, but there you go, they didn't. So have a go at the second worksheet and see if you can get that done.